start with him laughing. I love it. The fucking lady's gonna come back. That was at the grocery store. <laughs> oh my god, no. <laughs> All right, we'll back. All right, All right. start uh, this off. Welcome ahead, back Eddie. to another East versus West. Um, I'm your host, Eddie. Anthony. I'm Anthony. <laughs> That's Anthony. Uh, this is the only podcast where you can get a dose of both coasts. Today we got a special one. It is our 20th episode of East versus West. And we got a couple of interesting people on, some interesting guests. But first, we're going to start off. I'm going to transfer it over to, to Anthony. We got a couple things that we want to talk about before we get there. So as you can see on the screen, you can see all of our guests here. They're here. Um, that's no secret. <laughs> we were trying to keep this hidden for quite some time. We, we hinted some stuff on social media, but it's okay. You guys are well aware now. This is out in the public. You guys are watching this. This is the crossover of a lifetime. You thought Avengers Endgame was something. This is better than Endgame. This yeah. is the, takes Endgame out of the box office. Yeah. <laughs> um, no, uh, thank, thank you so much for supporting the uh, East versus West podcast for some time now. We are on our 20th episode right now, and this is a huge kind of milestone for us, especially since uh, lately me and Eddie have been very consistent with episodes uh, and stuff. It, 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 it went so far as to uh, we wanted to have a, a certain piece of merchandise for uh, this podcast. I don't know what's happening right now. I see some masks going on. and <laughs> I knew from the start when we did this podcast, it was going to be a lot of shenanigans, and I'm yeah. very happy for that right now. Um, it's something we need right now in this tough time, but uh, social distancing at its finest, you know. Um, uh, but uh, we got merchandise on our store right now, which is you can find the link in our bio. Um, and... Uh, so, yeah, that's that's basically it for merchandise. I mean, the podcast is going good, East versus West. What started as a little concept with me and Eddie has grown to such stuff that we couldn't believe would ever grow to where it is now. Um, and we're highly thankful for that. Uh, also, me and Eddie, everybody, test. Yep. Test. Uh, test your mind. The legendary truth. There you go. Um, uh, so, yeah, I mean, if you guys want to continue to follow and support the, the channels – uh, you know, me and Eddie are on social media. Um, mine's at the Knights of Horror. Eddie's is very complicated to say. You can <laughs> just make a simple it's one. At are you Eddie Tained? Is it really? Yeah. <laughs> oh, uh, it doesn't pop up like that on mine, but okay. Um, but it, it's been a, it's been a journey, and I'm glad to finally uh, have some guests here. Um, two on the we- on the, two on the East Coast. I'm sorry, and uh, one on the West Coast. Uh, first and foremost, we're going to start with uh, the first time I'm collabing with him ever, uh, and it's been a long time coming, and I'm glad he's finally on the show. Uh, Mr. Zombie Chris from Florida, our our East Coast uh, boy out there. How you doing, Zombie Chris? Welcome. I am doing swell. Uh, thank you for having me. Oh, yeah. I'm so nervous. I don't know. I'm, I'm going first. <laughs> first. First. Going first. first. Um, so transitioning to another, uh, what do you even call them? Flor, Floridians, Flor, Florian, 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 I didn't say that Losh. Come on. I, I love you, brother. I'm the only one that's been kind of like, I've been really nice to Losh since he's been on. Eddie's just been roasting him left and right. Scott's just been roasting him left and right. Me and Chris are just minutes late. trying to figure stuff out. Um, all the way from the East Coast and in the Florida area, Mr. Losh TV. How you doing, man? I'm um, happy to be here. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Taking it back to the West Coast. Oh. Uh, the man uh, who is pretty much killing the game out here with all of his media and all of his uh, content uh, coming out, giving us some of the best uh, experience for all things theme parks out on the West Coast. Uh, give it up for your boy, SoCal Exploring. Uh, you know, I'm already back, back on the Knights of Horror channel. Just want to say that I have the longest veterinary reign on the Knights of Horror channel. So, Eddie, don't even try. <laughs> Ooh, oh damn it's gonna get aggressive oh. like that you guys might be tied dude i mean eddie's done 20 episodes of east versus west he's been on a and couple i've been of on nights before hey yeah. hey that's fair that's fair but yeah, i can't i can drive an hour and a half and go give anthony a hug right now that's true <laughs> social <laughs> distancing you got to take a it's social distancing social yeah. distancing come on uh-huh. I'm the furthest from, I guess, everybody. Everybody's pretty close to each other as far as, like, the East Coast and the West Coast. 
But um, all right, cool. So, guys, thanks for joining us. Welcome to the podcast. It's going to be a good one. We got a collaborative group of some of the most influential uh, podcasters around Halloween Horror Nights. And today we're going to be talking about the event. Um, but I also wanted to open up and kind of give everybody just a quick floor for if you've been living under a rock and you don't know who these guys are, they can tell you a little bit about themselves and what they do. Um, we're going to go in the same order. Just a few seconds, guys, if you could introduce yourself and your channel. Um, we'll start off with Chris. Oh, so I heard <clears throat> just a couple minutes, right, for Zombie Chris. Uh, what is up, everybody? If you don't know who I am, I am your local zombie uh, here on the East Coast. I cover horror. I cover theme park stuff. I cover horror nights. Uh, all sorts of stuff on the channel. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't know what else to say. And the name the the name of the channel is Zombie oh, Chris. Zombie Chris, yeah. Zombie yeah. Chris. Hopefully that would get stuck in your brain. It's just Zombie Chris. Yeah, and uh, yeah. And social media or anything? Uh, social media is uh, Zombie CT, but no, it's not for Connecticut. Uh, I don't know why everyone thinks that. It's just a Zombie CT. Just like uh, Carrie O. You know what I mean? <laughs> if anyone knows the joke, they know. Cool, cool. Carry on. Uh, right. Thank you, Senor. Thanks for for coming on. Thanks for sharing your your channel with us. Um, next, we have the the West Coast Explorer, SoCal Exploring. Tell us a little about yourself, sir. Well, you know, exploring, exploring a uh, SoCal. Now exploring Orlando. Still not doing a name change, but yeah. <laughs> uh, so subscribe. <laughs> subscribe SoCal Exploring on YouTube. Uh, social media, SoCal Exploring. It's SoCal Exploring Media on Instagram, but it'll pop up. And yeah, I'm happy to be on here. We also run a, a dope podcast called Horror Nights Unscripted. Pretty cool podcast. You guys should check it out. Yep. With my yep. boy Lost TV. Yep. The and his co-host is the next gentleman that will be introducing himself, Senor Lost Adrian from Lost TV. All right. So, hi. I am happy to be here. You know, I love these men right here, Eddie and Anthony. Nights of hey. Horror, East versus West. Very inspirational. They've showed us so many things. You know, hey. they've told us that they are the only East versus West <laughs> podcast. The only one that is the ghost of both coasts. I'm glad you so uh, I'm glad you watched that episode, by the way. Thank you. <laughs> oh, oh, I watched it. I watched it at least three times because I had to show everyone. I was like, look at these guys. Look how happy look how happy they are. Only. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Emphasis right. on the only. That's what you need a shirt that just says only. You know the obey shirts? Only. <laughs> they live right they live great horror movie um exactly. no but i i am glad that um outside of joking i am glad that there is also another platform where east versus west the concept and the idea is expanding to other youtubers uh with uh horror nights um unscripted, unscripted. and um I, I i i watched the first episode and i i was very impressed with your guys's chemistry um so you guys got a, a really bright future ahead of you guys and um I can see a ton of collaborations in the future with East versus West and Horror Nights Unscripted. So, uh, yeah, guys, keep it up. It's going to be a good show. Uh, we got a, we got a really good, uh, solid show for you guys today. Um, today we're going to be talking. Did his sound just cut off? Oh no no no! Your sound just cut off. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, I got a really good show for you. Shut the hell up! <laughs> <laughs> I can't hear you. About- we don't have a good show for you. <laughs> yeah. All right, Eddie, you we have a good in, show Eddie. for you. They're like, stop lying. Stop, you might stop. as well be 30 minutes late, bro. <laughs> oh. Oh. <laughs> oh, my God. I guess Eddie. Go nope. ahead. Anthony, we still can't hear you. <laughs> Eddie's going to just do the whole episode. <laughs> All right. Hey, Anthony, just sit there and look pretty. I got this. <laughs> <laughs> That's easy for him, though. Look at the guy. <laughs> All right, look, while while Anthony's trying to fix his his sound, uh, we're going to take it to the next step, which um, before we get into the event this year, I wanted to just take a quick moment for everybody to talk about their first year at the event. We got people that have been doing this for a really long time. Uh, I know SoCal. I know uh, Chris has been doing this for probably about like nine years, and and Losh has been doing this for some time as well. I myself have been going to the event for a really long time. So uh, why don't we start off with you, Chris? What was your first time at the event? Uh, that sounds so funny my first time uh it was hhn 13 which if you didn't know uh, orlando lingo 
Uh, that is 2003, I want to say. That was the year of the director. Um, yeah. That was my first year. Um, previously, I kind of kind of knew what Horror Nights was. I wasn't like really into it. But then like the commercials started ramping up. And I, I, I still hear that song played from the commercial. It gives me chills. And, and uh, that was when I made the decision to go to Halloween Horror Nights. Um, I was terrified. <laughs> God, yeah. I was so terrified then. Um, yeah, that was my first year. Yeah, those that was a, a great time in Halloween Horror Nights. That's actually my second year. My first year was Islands of Fear, which was the year before that, which was mm -hmm. the Caretaker. Uh, uh, lucky. But we'll we'll go ahead and we'll go over to SoCal Scott. What was your first year at Hollywood? So I've been going since 2010. Which was kind of a weird transition for Hollywood. It was just a weird transition overall. A lot of good mazes that year. I didn't really know what Horror Nights was at all. I mean, I just kind of going just because it looked fun. So, <clears throat> and then I got hooked like everybody else. As soon as you go to Horror Nights the first year, you get the Horror Nights a bug. Yep. And ever since then, I've been loyal to 10 years. And, you know, one of the most loyal out there in Hollywood. So, hey. I've been dedicated. Yeah, the, the following over in Hollywood is small. No, I'm kidding. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> no, it is. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. But uh, last but not least, Senor Lush TV, Adrian, when was your first time at the event? How am I supposed to compare to these guys? I know. Um, He's gonna be going to be like, last year was my first time. <laughs> my, first <laughs> first was year was <laughs> my first year was 2013. So it was the year, HHN 23, it was the year they had, like, a park-wide scare zone for The Walking Dead. Ah, uh, gotcha. Very nice. Absolutely loved it. It was great. Yep. Hey, but, uh, uh, Chris, you know, the, uh, the director, wasn't that when they opened up both parks? Or was that 2015? Or uh, HHN uh, 15? Oh, no. Uh, wait a minute. 13... There was one year when it opened 13 up. was only Adventure. Islands, I want to say. 16 was back home at Universal. So I think 15 was uh, both parts. Both parts. Does yeah. my audio work? That was the one that had oh, Terry. Yeah. We can hear hey, you now, Anthony. Yeah. Welcome no, back. I mean, it's been working. I've just been quiet. I had like a uh, thing ready to go. Like, yeah, my first year was 2011. Hey. <laughs> oh. that, that, is like, that is a great joke, <laughs> Anthony. Uh, I, okay, guys, so before you guys we continue. You Hollywood don't don't count it as the same we do in orlando right yeah, with the numbers no okay you're like that's just stupid and i'm gonna stress that so much warn you before we continue that might happen throughout the thing where my mic goes in and out because it was happening when i did a, a video conference at one point i don't know why it does that but I, it tends to only do that when there's a lot of people in for some reason so if it does happen eddie you just got to step in as out cap i gotcha i gotcha all right cool so uh, taking it from there, as you can see, everybody has been going to the event for some time now. I, I've gone well over 10 years, and I think everybody here has gone roughly around 10 years, if not more. Um, the event is near and dear to all of us, and uh, this year it seems like we're going to have some changes. But luckily enough, the the news out there seems really positive for what's going to happen. Um, there's a lot of talk about what measures are going to be put in place for this year's event as far as safety measures, um, given the current circumstances, which we won't jump too much into the circumstances, but we'll talk about maybe what those measures may be. But first and foremost, we've had some predictions out there. Um, and, and let's let's keep it going with the roundtable because we got five people on here. If we all start talking at the same time, it's going to be too many people. Um, let, let's go first with you, Chris. Go ahead and uh, let us know what you think about the current speculation map that's out there. I think we got version uh, 2.0 is the most recent one. Yes, that is correct. We have 2.0. Uh, some changes on there. Um, Carrie, Ohio has dropped from Legendary Truth, which it could lead to something bigger, I think. Uh, we have the Unknown Original, uh, which I think a lot of people are kind of sleeping on. Uh, the secret IP, hmm, I don't know what it is quite yet, um, but I do believe it's got to be something big because if you look at all the IPs this year, it doesn't really quite look like an audience grabber like previous years with Stranger Things. 
Um, they need kind of that big icon on the shirt, um, you know, like a Michael Myers or maybe a leather face or yeah. something to that degree. Um, uh, other than that, I think it's, it's looking like a solid event. We just kind of need a little more of the theme of what's going with this year. You know, like last year we had sort of the vibe of 80s, you know, and it's kind of always hard to, to see where they're going with a theme because if you look at hhn 25 like that was perfectly casted with jack coming back and then the overall theme of the event like just having jack almost everywhere and yeah having the icons on the uh, hollywood uh, scare zone so kind of wondering how they're going to tie all this together with terror queen and maybe a storyteller kind of type of thing and will we see some past icons that we haven't seen before maybe maybe I, I think there's got to be some of the, the bigger icons because Terra Queen, uh, we talked about it on our podcast like about two podcasts ago. The, yeah. the Terra Queen and the Storyteller are not big enough to <laughs> handle a 30th year anniversary. Um, but we'll transition over to the West Coast. We got Scott. Sorry, right, Eddie. So ca- I'll, I'll take it over from here. This is Uh-oh. West Coast. Okay. This is West Coast. Okay. You got East, East Coast. Coast. You got them too. <laughs> Scott, I got you, brother. This yeah. is our time to shine now. Scott. West Coast predictions, brother. We saw a uh, a version 2.0 as well of the map. Um, what are your thoughts as far as uh, what this map's looking like and what the future of the event potentially holds? Well, um, a couple, like not a lot of changes compared to version one of the map. It's two changes, which is Gremlins and Sabrina being scrapped, um, which is no surprise at all. This the original, I don't think we're going to be getting another original. That's just my personal opinion. That'd be weird if we got... I was talking about this. It's like, we have four originals in Hollywood. Like, what the hell? When does yeah. that ever happen? Yeah, so, that's a, it's a rarity. Yeah, I don't think that will be an original. I could be wrong, though. You know, it could be another original. The secret IP, <laughs> I think, is going to be one of the big ones. Is Invisible Man, Texas Chainsaw, or, like, I just discovered um, Silence of the Lambs. So if it's Silence of the Lambs, it's gonna have it's gonna be covered in black walls, as we all know. Same with Invisible Man, um, it's whatever. But if it's Texas Chainsaw, it's gonna, it's gonna so be great. It's 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 really kind of throwing me a curveball over here because everybody keeps predicting Texas Chainsaw, and it's just kind of being thrown out there as far as predictions go. Um, and the only reason that's kind of making me a little skeptical about that is the fact that. Since it's not really having its own uh, film coming soon, or is it just are they just bringing it back just for the hell of it? Is that is that what you know? Well, what I think would there, be? I think there's an inside source that posted it in an article, and it's got a lot of people talking on the forums, um, and that's what that's where the rumors have come around. And I have a couple inside sources that say like, oh yeah, they've been talking about it too. So I think that's where the rumor came from. I would love to see the uh, remake version of that, the 2003. Uh, where it told a little bit of a backstory and a more twisted version of it. That's, I mean, I like that one. In actually... 2016, when we had Texas Chainsaw, like that was one of my most favorite mazes ever. So if I'd be fine with it, bring it back. Yeah. Um, I'm gonna let Eddie take over for uh, Losh because you know we gotta get Losh cool. in here too, man. Losh yeah, is yeah. waiting, man. Thirty minutes late, but <laughs> really, you gonna, keep, you gonna keep that up? That, that's <laughs> me. He's our guest. He's a guest. <laughs> It's okay. He's from the Yukon. Um, so, <laughs> bro, uh, what what do you think about the current speculated Orlando map? So, I actually really like the map. I think it's really cool. The one thing I didn't like that was on version 1, that ended up being on version 2, like, changed, was Billie Eilish. Like, I thought it was a cool premise, but I'm happy that they made her into, like, just giving the music to monsters. Yeah. I feel like that's a way better way in Orlando, at least, to personify Billie Eilish. And maybe give her the Lagoon show as well, but we don't know anything about the show, so. Yeah. Yeah, we'll, we'll see. I think there's a, a really good chance that she'll be the show. And I, I think from a Hollywood perspective, at least me personally, I know that Hollywood does a lot more uh, things with artists actually creating original houses. So I, I think it makes a lot more sense for them, even though I'm not sure that they're going to get it. Uh, what, what do you guys think about that? I, I know this is this is a split between the two West Coast guys. I, I think SoCal kind of is okay with it. I I know what what Anthony thinks. So you you guys 
Break it down for us. What's the thing, right? I'm going to step in here. To come to the event and the poster's in. hanging right behind me, and that's Iron Maiden. <clears throat> I'm going to step in here, all right? Because with me, as a lot of you guys know, and um, maybe a couple in the audience that are watching this know, I hate, hate people who tear on, <laughs> on properties before. Now, don't get me wrong. I tear on Hollywood a lot for their black walls and everything. But, like, people who don't give the things a chance sometimes, like, it pisses me off. Now, don't get me wrong. Screw Billie Eilish and screw the fact that she may be coming. But they could do way better bands like Slipknot or any other bands like that. You know, right? There's okay. there's plenty of there's plenty of content. But as far as, like, uh, uh, someone like that coming, you just got to have an open mind. You just got to let the creative team do yeah. what they do best. And I think that's the case just for the event in general. Um, I, I think Universal can surprise you with anything. And sometimes something that you think is going to be great ends up being terrible. Oh, yeah. Oh, so, yeah. you know, it could go both ways. So you got to be open-minded about it. But um, it's that's the first time I hear this perspective from you. So interesting yeah. enough to Anthony's hear. Anthony's cooking up something right now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm not. I'm, I'm kind of looking at our... <laughs> Stuff we're gonna talk about on the show. Go ahead. You're good. Yeah, yeah, focus, focus, focus. <laughs> I am focusing. I can hear everything that's going on. I'm, I'm keeping gotcha, up with gotcha. the show. All right. So outside of the speculation map, um, here we're, we're gonna flip it around. We'll we'll let SoCal start this one, and then we'll bring it back around to the East Coast. Uh, we'll go SoCal, Anthony. Uh, we'll go Lost, then Chris after this. Okay. Um, so with this one, outside of what's been speculated. I know that there's a couple other things circulating out there. I've heard you talk about it, SoCal. Uh, what do you think, outside of the speculation map, something that you think potentially is coming to your event? And now that you're doing Orlando, you, you're more than welcome to you know, shoot something out there that you think maybe Orlando's getting as well. So as far as like what's on the map already or what's like what no, nobody no, no. Off, thinks? Off the map. Off the map. Okay. Anything additional that you think is potentially coming? So for Hollywood... um. I want to say real quick what's not coming, and that's the Terror Tram. A lot of people think the Terror Tram is coming back this year. It's not going to come back. Rest it's in just, peace. Um, yeah. Rest in peace. Uh, not Whoville. only the Terror Tram, but Whoville. Whoville got yeah. them all. <laughs> and that's that's another big reason why it's not coming back. They're just, I mean, unless they were to put a maze out there, that'd be oh, insane. Oh, that'd be dope. Leading into the Bates Motel. <laughs> that'd be insane. But yeah, um, as far as that, I don't think that's coming back. With the... With the secret IP on the map, like I said, I think it could be Silence of the Lambs very easily. It just, it, it's a lot of, it's one of the things that a lot of people don't realize could happen, but it's a classic movie. Hannibal Lecter would be terrifying. Um, I think it would work. As far as what's on the map, though, I think it's pretty spot on for Hollywood, at least. Yeah. I think it's pretty spot on, in, in my personal opinion. And for Orlando, Halloween Horror Nights 30. That unknown original, uh, me and Lost are talking about this. This will probably be the anniversary house. Some somewhere along the lines of like the Hollowed Pass in 2010. Uh, hopefully they would do something like that. But if you notice, all of the or most of the original mazes have an icon that can be related to them. Like Bedtime Stories is obviously a storyteller. Pumpkin yep. original could be a new icon that we don't know yet. Dungeon of Terror could be, I don't know, that's probably just a throwback maze for the not an actual icon in there. Terror Quintus, obviously, we have the Terror Queen. So I think that we're going to be introduced to a new icon in the, the Pumpkin original. Yeah, possibly. Uh, Anthony? So I think with, uh, with a lot what Scott said as far as um, uh, Hannibal Lecter, uh, Sons of the Lambs coming. And I look over because I have the Funko Pop literally sitting right here. Um, <laughs> but uh, I'm a fan of uh, Silence of the Lambs, very psychologically uh, driven horror movie, which I loved a lot. I mean, just coming out of, you know, this genius of a guy, Hannibal Lecter, who is just an insane human being uh, who just is a, is a cannibal. I mean, it's just an amazing concept for a movie that spawned uh, a sequel as well as a, uh, a, a kind of a prequel, which was part of the trilogy, um, which I barely found that out like a month or two ago when my dad was watching it. But, um, it, it, it's a it's a fascinating film. It, it is uh, definitely some. There's a lot they can work with. Again, though, it, it's going to be a challenge, much like how The Exorcist was for uh, a challenge for uh, Horror Nights in Hollywood. Um, it's going to be a challenge to, for them to do a maze based off uh, Sounds of the Lambs, just because you know there's not very many scary scenes in there. I guess the most like compelling and and really disturbing scenes in that film is of course when we see um, what's his name, uh, Bill um buffalo bill 
And, you know, just a lot of the disturbing stuff that he does is, is terrifying. And then, of course, when we see Clarice and and um, and Hannibal, you know, encounter with each other is another terrifying scene. Um, so it's going to be, you know, I, I want to get I want to let people know now if Hannibal does come to the event, you got to give it like Scott said, give it a chance. Um, yeah, there may not be a lot to work with, but usually Universal Creative knows how to kind of pick those scenes and really bring them to life, which I've always really loved with uh, Mazes at, at HHN. Um, I would love to see, uh, being that Halloween Kills is slated to come out this year, um, I would love to see Halloween 2018 uh, come to the event, which would be a very good way to promote not only Hollywood ki- uh, Halloween Kills, but, um, you know, it's like it's kind of one of those things where you get to walk through the maze and then go see the movie. So yeah. it's like you get to kind of live through the first movie and then you can go watch the new movie on screen. And if you guys go to the uh, Hollywood event, um, Scott knows this. If you wait in lines at certain mazes, they actually play like trailers for that, uh, whatever they're doing. Or they'll play Crypt TV stuff out yep. in the line queues. Um, so it'd be a good way to really throw up the trailer to kind of really promote that movie and, and get people hyped in line. As well as the Crypt TV stuff they usually play, yeah. which would be really cool. Um, but yeah, I mean... Those are basically my two biggest predictions. And if they are going to do another original um, based around Horror Nights, I would love to see a scare zone that we did last year, which was Spirits and Demons of the East. Um, it was a very awesome scare zone, <laughs> a lot of great characters, and I would love to see uh, those characters in a storyline. Um, so we'll see. All right. Quick quick one real quick because you brought up a, a point there. So uh, first and foremost, I, I, I think the East Coast guys will agree with me. I don't think um, – uh, trailer houses, like uh, houses that came out before the movie came out, did too well. Have yeah. done too well. They, they don't have a history of doing too well. Uh, but uh, ha- Halloween coming to the event is something that I-, I think is very likely, but brings up a good point. A- another speculation out there is potentially a Blumhouse maze. Just a quick yeah. yay or nay, do you think there's a potential of a Blumhouse maze coming to the West Coast, Scott? Um, well, no, and also I don't want to see it. Yeah, there you go. Hey, honestly, um, the best policy. How about you, Anthony? Well, I mean, if they're gonna, if they have to bring something in last minute, it's gonna be either Invisible Man or a Halloween 2018, both Blumhouse uh, films. And uh, I mean, it's a good cover up. I don't know how they're gonna do Invisible Man. I mean, if if you've seen the movie, I mean, the way it's it, the way he is in that movie. I mean, it's not like anything like the original in the 1930s. So I don't know how they would do an Invisible Man maze, but they'll. Do it, but a Halloween Look, 2018 maze, I would love to see. Here's yeah. the thing. Let me step. Let me step in a quick second. Um, if if they were to do a Blumhouse maze, like I'm not against Blumhouse. I mean, we've seen in Hollywood at least the two failures that came, and the first year wasn't really a failure because the Purge area was good and Happy Death Day was good, but Sinister was a bunch of reused props and everything, which sucked. The only reason I don't want to see Blumhouse come is like Anthony said, it'd have to be Halloween 2018 and the Invisible Man combined. And I want to see Halloween in a full maze. I don't want to see it in a, like a crappy little one minute and a half section. You know, it just you gotcha. can't see a lot of it. Yeah, I, I'm the same. Uh, I, I don't know if you know, Scott, but I'm I know I think everybody else here knows I'm a huge Halloween fan. Huge bias uh-huh. towards any Halloween no, film. So. I, I'm I'm a huge Halloween. Fan. Wait, that's Scott, like, you're telling me you didn't reason. like Horse of Blumhouse Chapter Two? That was like the best maze that year. What are you talking about? Oh yeah, definitely <laughs> filled with the tons of black walls that Murdy promised weren't. Dude, be there. that's Dude. what made it scary. <laughs> we don't. Yeah, the bl- the the black walls scare you guys. You're like no, especially, especially the black big walls. Scene where why I go to like, knots? It, it was yeah. like we were watching like the unfriended screens. Truly impressive. No yeah. scare there or anything, but it was scary. Yeah. What are black walls? Yeah, exactly. We don't know <laughs> what black walls are uh, over on the East Coast. But, all right, with that, we'll transition into into Adrian, Senor Lost TV. Um, outside of what's been speculated on the map, uh, do you? I, I think these guys brought up a couple of things that potentially could come to both events. Um, right. So you, you got uh, Silence of the Lambs and potentially something Blumhouse or Halloween. Anything else you mm-hmm. want to add or maybe elaborate on those two? All right, so do you want me to be serious right now? Yeah, go ahead. Be serious. All right. Unfriended dark web for Hollywood. There it is. Boom. Um, No, I'm kidding. Yeah. Uh, (laughs) So I'm not sure who it was that said it, but I know it's someone in this chat. Someone right here said a Halloween trilogy house next year. I want to say it was Zombie. Yep. I think it was me, yeah. Yeah, okay. 
I agree with that more. And I know Eddie's kind of mad at me right now because he wants to see Halloween this year because, you know, he that man loves his Halloween. Yes, I do. Okay. <laughs> but we have a potential to maybe have something little from Blumhouse because Blumhouse and Universal, obviously, it's the parent company. So if they need a last-minute IP, they're going to pull from there. Or if let's Monkey Paul that's also attached to Blumhouse, which would be Candyman, if that can happen, which I doubt it'll happen, but we can potentially have Candyman. So. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All righty. Senor Zombie Chris. He's French, guys, so you got to say it that way. It's not Zombie <laughs> Chris. It's Zombie Chris. Merry. <laughs> um, hmm. Uh, would it shock everyone if I've said I've never seen Silence of the Lambs? No. Oh my God. Nope. Nope. It what? wasn't one bit, no. actually. But um, this also ties to Halloween Horror Nights because uh, before, when they announced The Shining, I never saw The Shining before. I, well, I saw it before I went to the house, but I never saw it when they made the announcement. I was well, like, see, no, oh, I guess offensive. I got to watch it. Hold on. Hold on. So before you continue. <laughs> that's just pure neglect, man. How could you I be know. a horror podcaster or a horror YouTube channel, now, man? Come on. Listen to this, though. I know a, a, a chick who plays... And if she's watching, I'm not talking shit on you. You're an amazing scare actor. You're an amazing Is this the only person. chick you know? <laughs> yeah. No, he knows Losh. Oh, dude, that's me. Why is everybody messing on Losh today, dude? Like, that's me. And I'm like the only one that's like me and Chris are like, you know, you right, gotta say bad, you gotta save some with us. My bad. Um, All right. No, but I will say this, she's an amazing and talented scare actress, and she's an amazing person. She runs a channel, she helps run a channel. But um she plays a werewolf at Not Scary Farm and she's never seen American Werewolf in London. Damn. <laughs> I'm like no, that's that, an icon. That's a must werewolf movie if you're gonna. You and know. you haven't watched Gremlins. I don't want to watch Gremlins. It looks so, like oh, shit right now. It looks you're like down shit on the right hand side. So I'm poking you for doing that. I, I, I'm, I, that's why I'm glad I'm it's not going to be a fan. It just doesn't look like a movie I would watch. <laughs> I want to get a lot right. of hate for that now. But all right, okay. so Chris, you haven't watched Silence of the Lambs, so but, you can speculate that. What would you speculate outside of what's on the speculation map? Oh uh, man, uh, I feel like Leatherface is a big enough icon to have on shirt. You know, like yeah, between him and like the maybe one or two of the ghosts from uh, uh, House on Haunted Hill. I think I said that right. Um, the Haunting of Hill House. No. Oh, <laughs> I, was, I, was like, <laughs> I saw that at the bottom. He was like. Um, <laughs> Uh, I'm, I'm gonna always pronounce that that way in in, in the blogs. Um, uh, man, I, I like Michael Myers, but I feel like they want to wait till next year. The what? Blumhouse angle seems like it could be maybe there, but then I don't know what they would put in it. Um, Psycho is something kind of old tradition with uh, HH in Orlando, and we haven't had it in a long time. So maybe I'm gonna go with Psycho. Interesting. So wait, hold on. Let me let me uh, have you elaborate on something, Chris. So you don't think Halloween is coming back up till next Lash year? Lost is but... raising his hand. I... Lost, put your hand <laughs> yeah. down. Put your hand down. All right. Maybe he's probably in the corner. Nobody sees that he's raising his hand, Scott. <laughs> <What do you mean? laughs> but <laughs> Cyberbull. Elaborate on something for me real quick. So Halloween, uh, from from my experience, has come to the event for the past couple of years, every two years. Why do you yeah. think this year will be the first time that that doesn't happen? Because this would be the this would be two years from the last time he was at the event. Mm. Good point. But the the two-year span is based upon the classic original um, um, franchise. And with this being the new franchise, I I feel like they didn't do it on the first go-around when everyone was thinking they were going to do the first Halloween. And then they saw, wow, this is successful. Oh, okay, there's two more planned. Now we have you know, the final one being next year. I don't know. It just makes sense to kind of have it as that big house to advertise, you know, the trilogy, like come and relive, you know, 
all three of the new ones together oh, in okay. one big house. That's why I always thought they might do it next year, um, as opposed to just doing one this year and then what happens next year. Are they going to have Michael Myers come right back again? Gotcha. So, I'm actually I'm with Chris on that because, um, I mean, I think with something like Halloween, it's like. I don't know. I, I forgot where I was going to go here. Never mind. <laughs> I, 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 I seriously, I, I had I, exactly where I was going, and then I started talking. Oh so I, he said, let me you fumbled. Anthony, I see what you're doing. You were, you were going to support his case on the fact that it'll come next year, and because it's the new like line of, of uh, Halloween, the trilogy will be shown all in one well, house. Oh, okay, no, I know where I was going to go. Okay, go ahead. Well, So with Halloween 2018, this was originally planned to be the final Halloween film. And it wasn't till it made the money it made that they're like, oh, screw it. You know, we're going to come back and do two more. We'll do a trilogy <laughs> out of it. And, you know, Danny McBride and David Gordon Green were like, yeah, this is going to be the last one and stuff. But this one made a shit ton of money. And they're like, oh, well, we can maybe do a trilogy out of this. So I do see where he's going with this. Um, initially, the plan wasn't for Halloween 2018 to get a sequel and a, a third movie as well. But now that 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 plan is in, you know, in motion – I see where Chris is going. That they yeah. it, it would be better to wait and do all three films, which I feel could be good and couldn't work at the same time. Uh, just because I know some people, I don't know how these next two Halloween films are going to be. They yeah. could yeah, suck. True. They could be amazing, you know. But I mean, with Halloween 2018, I, I definitely deserve, think that deserves its own maze at least. I mean, that was a solid film to bring back Michael Myers after you know. With with his fortieth anniversary and everything, like yeah. it was just a solid comeback and and I I get where Chris is coming from and I didn't think of it that way. The only thing that I'm taking into consideration is the fact that he's for the past like I think like eight years he's come to the event every two years and then he's been at the event so many times. The thirtieth anniversary, it would make sense for him to be there. And I'm gonna let Lash talk because he keeps on raising his uh, hand. Yeah, man. He, stop, okay. He's stop on the camera. A, so while Chris was talking, I just had like two ideas. He said that Psycho <laughs> has been tied to the event, right? The people under the stairs has also been tied toward the event. Sure. So at least know. for Orlando, I could potentially see them bringing the people under the stairs back for a third, fourth time? Fourth time? I want to say fourth time? I don't know what that is. You never seen the people, people under the stairs? It's one of the it's one of the first IPs that was brought to um, Orlando. Uh, yeah. Am I yeah. correct in saying that it was directed by Wes Craven? Yeah. Was it yeah. Wes Craven? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, it was. Um, what what do you guys think? Um, Anthony, chime in on Orlando too, man, because I think SoCal's making the 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 cut over. He's been doing a lot of covering on it, and I've been I know, I know. So I, I am I, not I, even sure if I'm going right there. this year. I'm. Sort of sign up to see where this leads. This Here, whole here's the thing, right? Pandemic. It took me, it took me an actual like booking of the trip for me to hop over the coverage, and now it's looking like I'm enjoying it too much to where I'm eventually gonna hop over there. Oh, you're gonna live over there. Go to the event. You're gonna love go to the event. So floor exploring. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know what we should do? And you know what we should do? So Josh is gonna run that account. Scott, I got you. <laughs> okay, check this out. Check this out, guys. Tell me this isn't a genius idea. All right. So Scott's going to be in Orlando filming and I'll go to Hollywood and film and then my videos get posted to your channel and your videos get posted to my channel. So then so then it almost be like it, 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 no it, idea. It'd be, it'd be like no idea. You know you know what it'd be like? It kind of be like we're just running our own channel still. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but hey, so what I was going to say for everybody to chime in on. So this year, I think there's going to be, although the speculation map hasn't shown it yet, maybe the the scare zones for Orlando are going to be around the icons. Uh, maybe that's how the icons show their face. Maybe the one of these original houses is icon related. Um, but one of the original icons, and we talked about this on an earlier episode of the podcast, is the caretaker. Or sorry. The Crypt Keeper. <laughs> the Crypt Keeper. Caretaker. Yeah, no, sorry. <laughs> the Crypt Keeper. You can see how I confuse that. They sound very similar. similar. Yeah. But the Crypt Keeper, um, I, I know that none of us actually went to that. But given that he was actually technically the first official like there. icon at the event, he was actually advertised as the icon. And I, I believe it was the fifth Halloween Horror Nights. 
I was what, what do you guys think of that coming to the event? Well, first Where? off, I was there. I was there. Were you? What, you yeah. Just going out and saying that we weren't all yeah. there. I was there. Losh was there. <laughs> yeah. Losh were actually yeah, I was gonna together, say, so. Yeah, I was, I was virtually there. Um, about, like, I, I virtually went there in, like, 20, 2013, I'd say. I oh, see so uh, a time machine. No, awesome. that was that was not 2013. <laughs> no, no, he no, virtually I, he went. Virtually yeah, virtually went there. Oh, come, on, Eddie, I know, come on, I know you're a little older, but come on. <laughs> oh, oh, get down with the oh, youth, dog. Oh, oh. <laughs> like oh okay. He was, he was building that one up. Yeah, I know. I'm that. See, something that you'll learn when you get older is don't be freaking late, mother. <laughs> My parents are late everywhere they go. We're Cuban. It's what we yeah. do. Yeah, okay. All right. Uh, Mexicans are the same way. It's okay. Yeah. Party doesn't start. Party says two o'clock. Doesn't really start till five. Exactly. <laughs> um. But anyway, the Crypt Keeper. Yeah. Be, him being a an icon and him. Were you saying him potentially possibly making a return or? Yeah, being like represented at the event this year. It would be a smart move because being that he was an, a major one back in the day, it would be cool for him to come back. I would love to eventually have uh, everyone – like I think they did this with – I believe it was 15 or 20 or 25. It was one of the three. But uh, when they had like the legend devil uh, sit on – the like he, he sat on the throne. Chris knows what I'm talking about. It's one of my yeah. favorite intros, and, and little by little he's introducing – the big four icons, which I thought was an amazing intro to the event. Um, and I wish they would bring something like that back for uh, HHN Orlando, especially for something like this, a, a big monumental year for them for their 30th anniversary. Um, something like that of an opening ceremony would be cool. I mean, you're just going down the years of all the greatest icons leading to the opening ceremony. And then the opening ceremony happens. However, if the rumors are true uh, with, the event, of course, cutting down on budget, eliminating scare zones potentially because of the pandemic and uh, as well as attendance as far as limiting uh, tickets maybe to only half of what they can hold on a normal night. Um, I don't know about this. I mean, I do want to see a lot of things for HHN 30, but only time will tell, really. Um, they probably already have a plan set in motion. But they, I'm pretty sure they got a plan B set in motion if they have to bring it out. Yeah, they always... I, I, I think you're, you're right there. Uh, uh, I, I got a question for everybody that I think is a positive question given the the current circumstances. And I'm gonna start it off with you, Anthony. Um, given the current circumstances and the potential changes to how the event is going to be managed, what do you think is the most positive thing, at, at least for some of us like hardcore fans, that's coming out of that? Uh, no crowds. Mm. That's my favorite thing. No, I go to no freaking, conga line. I go no to freaking. I went. I got. I went to Horn Nights five times this year, and every time I went, the two most packed mazes every single time were Killer Clowns from Outer Space and Stranger Things. And I felt every. I felt bad for every person who stood in line for Stranger Things, waiting yep. two damn hours, being like, "You're gonna be so disappointed when you walk out of that maze. It sucks. <laughs> you can literally get out of line and do the entire event." And wait till the very end and wait like five minutes. And even don't even do that because that maze is that bad. But, but let's be real here. Half those people online also came out and said, that was so good. Such yeah. a great haunted house. Now let's go home. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's all they came for. That's so I, Kyle, I came for Calicom, So what, what do you think? Or Anthony, did you want to add anything onto, onto that? Uh, lines and um, – I yeah yeah the other thing I was gonna say was maybe a little negative but I, I will hold that back. Okay, only positive. We're talking about what's. The I most know. Positive. Well, I was gonna bring up potential ticket prices going up, but I don't know. I don't. I don't think that's gonna be the case because they no, want. See, that's exactly yeah. what I was gonna dive into, but opposite. I think ticket prices are gonna be lower. Exactly. Because... Well, it depends though. If they if they cut the event in half and they don't put as much budget into it then yes, ticket prices will go lower. However, if they go in full effect with the same amount of mazes and everything that they put into this, you know, with no scare zones, I think will be... It, I mean, but with Hollywood, ticket prices are always going up every year, so I can't really argue with that. I don't know how it is with Orlando if ticket prices go up every year. Here's the thing, right? Is with Orlando, you guys have so much money. In Hollywood, we have a small budget. 
for for our event. That's just uh, that's it. What we should we should have more money because we're a studio. Like we're an actual okay. studio. It's okay. Like, they can they can say that all you want, but we have something you don't. The Universal Monster films were filmed on our lot. That's true. History, baby. That's true. We Michael, have Bring It On filmed in our... ours. Yeah. History, baby. Yes. Dracula, Frankenstein. Everything, everything regarding Universal Monsters is good in Hollywood compared to Orlando. But that's well, for another we, topic. We, we, we got Creature. So, now uh, East versus West is really we're going. We're the title actually <laughs> means something this episode. We got so, Creature. But I think that um, have... I think that Orlando will most likely lower ticket prices. But Hollywood, I feel like we're just going to keep ours the same or raise them because we're cheap. And that's just the unfortunate truth. Yeah, I, I think um, to touch on that, I don't think prices will change that much. They either will maintain, go up a little, or go down a bit. Um, I, I think given the current circumstances, they they have to incentivize people to, to go on vacation because people are scared to go on vacation. And the people that are scared are going to be more likely to actually do it, you know, given the proper PPE measures. Um if the price is right. Well, here's the thing. I want to add just one more thing to that is like, I feel like, and I saw this, someone tweeted about this is all these theme parks need to cater to their locals more when they open back up because with horror nights, you know, it's going to be, a lot of people are scared to travel and everything. It's going to be not to the extent of nine 11, but it's going to be where people are afraid to, to go out and travel at all, even at theme parks. But with people yeah. like us, like, I don't know about you guys, but I, I know the virus is scary, but as soon as a theme park opens, I'm going out to the theme park, no matter yeah. what. I'll um, be there. Uh, yeah, I'm not scared. To, I'm not scared to go out to a theme park. So they should really uh, cater more to their loyal people um, more than as far as their tourists goes. Yeah, they need to make money, but they need to cater to the people who are actually going to show up to the event and show up to the actual theme parks. Yeah, and which is one thing that we touched about, and Anthony and I talked about on the podcast was um, this might mean that we get a a an event that's more directed towards the loyal hardcore fan because they know those people are coming anyway and this is an opportunity to give them what they want because we don't have those stranger things crowds showing up because those guys are scared um but I, you know what i've been doing a lot of talking and yeah, you goddamn have <laughs> hey <laughs> this is the first time i've been you able know, to do this on to on. i'm gonna go ahead and transfer it over to anthony so what am I, uh, <laughs> Lash, what do you, uh, what do you think and, about what's yeah. something positive that you want? You haven't talked a lot and I feel very bad for that. I'm sorry. Um, the it's okay. People like to ramble on, so I'm sorry. Yeah, there's, there's some Cuban guys having their Jack and Cokes over there that like to rabbit on. Yeah. <laughs> it's iced tea. It's iced tea. Iced tea. Super <laughs> I know it's iced tea because he's had iced tea on the podcast before. <laughs> Oof. The rapper. Oof. Yeah. <laughs> Look, we give Lodge a chance to Ice talk, and he just sits there and sits Lodge, uh, something <laughs> positive that you hope comes out of this event this year. So, just like all three of you said, I feel like the ticket prices should go down, most likely will go down, because they want to cater to everyone that's been through this pandemic. The crowds will be lowered because of everyone afraid, and it's going to cater to everybody that's a Horror Nights fan, this year at least. Because... They're not really trying to – what am I trying to say? I lost my train of thought. They're not really trying to bring in a certain type of audience. Or something. <laughs> exactly. His exactly. thoughts are 30 minutes late. <laughs> really? You just can't let it go, can you? He was holding that one in too, you know? I know. He's been holding this he shit waiting. in. They're like, he's going to do it. It's the I'm same joke, just it. formatted differently. <laughs> yeah. And that's what makes it great. All right, you should have seen it coming, but you didn't. No, I saw it coming. Yeah, I, I've so been seeing him coming for. I'm, I already see like the next five coming. <laughs> um, Chris, something positive that will come out of this year's Horror Nights. Uh, just to piggyback for a brief second about the prices, um, if the event is half capacity, but the fact that if they don't have scare zones, that means they're going to drop the prices because they're not going to have us pay the same price that we previously paid like last year for less of the event. So that's at least a given. But uh, one positive thing I think would come out of this is um, maybe them sort of testing the system of like virtual like queue spacing, like 
because that's something we've never had done at Horror Nights, and they've done it, you know, for some of the daytime attractions. But for something like that to be used for Horror Nights, I don't know what that's going to mean for Express down the road, but it would be kind of cool to have something like that technology thrown in there. Definitely. Um, I think if I know it's all positive and stuff, but I think my biggest fear is if they do drop prices and they do limit to the event to like a half of uh, a normal capacity than they would, that the events are going to sell out a lot faster. Um, because now that prices are dropping for a, a premier event like Horror Nights, uh, more people are going to try to want to go. Um, and it, it's going to, it's going to make it a little bit harder for people like us who go and cover the event. Um, not only for enjoyment, but as kind of like a, a second job for most of us. And, you know, it, it's going to make it a little bit harder to do that if that is the case. However, um, I guess it's going to be a good point. Anthony, yeah, I mean, I, I just thought I, you guys were talking about that. And I was like, well, yeah, well, they could drop and, prices. But, you know, and to that, to that, I say, because I've been getting this in my comment section a lot to that. I always say is we go back to the who's scared to go and who's not scared to go. Obviously, the yeah. diehard fans are going to go. So in reality, will the event sell out? Because you got to think, all the diehard fans buy the frequent fear passes, and the only time they sell out is on the night of because of all the people who say, hey, it's a Friday night, let's go out to Horror Nights. So in reality, is it going to be hard for us diehard fans to get out there? I don't think so. That's the only yeah. thing that I'm, I'm op being open-minded about. Yeah, to, to your point, uh, Scott, the diehard fans make up the smaller portion yeah. of Or at base. least in Orlando, yeah. 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 So, you know, the people who follow like Stranger Things and that and those IPs, those are what make up the big portion of it. So if we end up getting a smaller event with these more centric to to like the big fan I, or houses, not IPs, then I, I don't think it's going to it's going to be an issue of it selling out. I think the, the people that would have gone won't have the reason to go. Well, yeah, and then I go back to like the yeah you say that the like it's it is the same here in Hollywood. It's eighty percent of the population at the event is the people who are fans of Stranger Things who are just coming for fun. But we'll already all the diehard fans, a small population, will already get our hands on frequent fear passes or advanced tickets, so we'll be fine. We don't need to worry mm -hmm. about them selling out. Yeah, yeah, I, I think there there there's a chance of it selling out depending on how strict the measures are. But I, I think diehard fans will be able to go maybe just not on your selected date maybe yeah. you'll have to concede to a date that it's available and Definitely. just to quickly put if there's no well this is just rumored out in the atmosphere of uh earth uh but if the rumor is that there's no frequent fear pass that definitely for me at least would change a lot of my thought process and how i do horror nights because Typically, like if it's opening weekend and I know I have frequent fear, I can do like the first night. It's cool. I film a little bit. You know, I try to enjoy the event. Maybe that second day I really try to like go and try to film as much as I can, especially like hang out in the zones. Maybe that third day if I didn't hit anything. So if I'm like forced to only get like a single ticket, I'm really going to have to think like, you know, one ticket, try to do everything. Maybe I come back and try to like really do like some really good video in the, in the zones type of thing, but it's going to really change how my, my game plan goes. Yeah, definitely. Um, mm -hmm. I think the best way to really uh, end this one on a positive note is just to, uh, I guess, just hope for the best, uh, especially with everything going on in the world right now. I mean, we're we're just uh, yeah, especially all of us haunt YouTubers. I mean, we're just hoping for at least a haunt season this year. You know what I mean? And uh, he just dissed you, by the way. That was hilarious. I know he left me hanging, Chris. No, nah, it's okay. Do that, Chris. He's been <laughs> bagging on Lasha freaking. Well, I mean, podcast. We, wait, wait, hold up, hold up, Anthony. Let, let's not end it just yet. I I have one more kind of like topic that I want to do before. I wanted to first let everybody talk about the event as a whole before we transition to one other thing about the event and the current state of things. I'm all yours. I'm all here. So I'm listening. Okay. Yeah, we're waiting. All right, cool. All right, cool. I'm listening. All right, so the, the next thing that I just wanted to touch on really quick was basically some of the measures that they're talking about implementing. Um, so I'm sure you guys have heard um, mask on both employees as well as the the visitors to the park. Um, 
as well as temperature checks. If you're over a hundred, um, you don't get access to, to the park. Um, and then they're, they're implementing a bunch of different like stations for sanitation, hand cleaning. And then I, I know that we were circulating a picture that was from Japan. I think it was where the seating on the, the rides is like split up so that nobody's sitting next to each other. So if it's a, if it's like a roller coaster with two seats, it's one person sitting in every seat and they stagger it out. Um, so as far as those measures go, I personally am a hundred percent for it that I'm going to the event if it's there. And if those measures are in place, they make me feel even more comfortable going to the event. But how do you guys feel about it? Anthony, we'll start with you, bro. I'm going to say this. It's going to be a disaster when it first starts because there's still going to be – and, you know, it, it's a good idea and it's a smart idea to keep everyone safe. However, the reason why I say it's going to be a disaster when it first starts is because everybody's going to try to figure out a system that works and gets people into the park as fast and as efficiently as possible. Um and usually with new things, it always takes a longer time. Um, I mean, for example, Disneyland over here in California, when they first – when they did security a long time ago, a while back, um, which they still do security. But when they did security like near the ticket booths, it was a fucking cluster over there. It really was. It, it was not good. You know, it was always packed in that little-ass area. So when they finally moved security to um, – you know where the parking structure was it made it a lot more organized uh if you had to drop stuff off to your car that you couldn't bring in you could seriously go right up the stairs drop it off and come back rather than going all the way to the tram taking the tram going all the way back you know what i mean so it, i think in the beginning it's going to be a disaster because they're still going to try to figure out the kinks and how to work it and move everyone in fast but make sure they're doing the necessary precautions that everyone is still healthy enough to come in and and you know you know safe and everything but as they get this the hang of this kind of whole thing i think that a better plan will come into effect where they have a, a system down where they get everybody in uh safely uh everybody tested right and uh kind of keep everybody moving because i i look at it as a crowd point of view just getting into the damn parks is going to be a disaster yeah do but do temperature checks and and mask on both ends make you feel more comfortable going it, feel, it makes me feel comfortable. I mean, if I have to wear a mask to go to this to these parks, so be it. I will. As long as I get to get out of the house, that's just my biggest thing. <laughs> yeah, dude, I need to get out. SoCal? Um, thing with me is, like, there's certain measures, like, and I did a video on this talking about the different survey questions that Orlando sent out. There's certain measures that I feel like aren't necessary to implement because they won't help as much. For example, like with the with the picture that was circulating around in the group chat of the people sitting individually on the coaster, if you're sitting with your friend or family member, whoever it is, you shouldn't have to be split up. If as far as a random person goes, yes, but I I mean I don't see I I think that you shouldn't you should be able to sit with their your party members. Then again, we have to look at it as like they want to keep the seats that are unoccupied disinfected and clean the mask i'm all for because it adds that extra level of security on the virus spreading you feel protected and for most part masks work pretty good temperature checks i don't know if it's going to make me feel more comfortable or just more as of an annoyed i get that it's necessary but i mean if most people have common sense if you have over 100 degree fever don't go to the fucking parks like don't yeah just don't so um I want to piggyback off that real quick. Uh, we all should know, or maybe if you don't, I don't know, but there's a YouTuber, JP Land 21 um, who brought up a really good point uh, with that, saying that what if you go to the parks? I think he brought up in our group chat. What if you go to the park? Because he mm -hmm. goes to the parks like multiple times a week. And what does that mean for a temperature check for him? Like, does he have to still go through that every time or whatever? I mean, that can be kind of annoying, especially if you're a, a you know a theme park goer who goes multiple times a week to the parks. I mean that I think that that feature can be kind of annoying. Uh, if you have to do it once a week, because me I'm I'm used to I I usually go to Disneyland when it was open about once a week, um, just to go and hang out. Uh, Universal I have not made a trip out in months, but I got to do that. But uh, I guess if you're doing something like that, yeah, it's still gonna be annoying, but. It is what it is. In the end of the day, if you have to get, if that's what you have to do to get in these damn parks, then yeah, I think yeah. I think Anthony sets it up perfectly. I mean, a lot of these things, I'm just kind of like whatever about. 
I mean, a lot of them, I think, are unnecessary, but it is what it is. It's a reality, and there's nothing yep. that we can do about it. If we can go to the theme parks and have to go to these, then so be it. Fuck it. Like, at least we get our theme parks back. Yep. Yeah. And I, I think the to to that point, Anthony, it will be you got to get checked every single time that you come to the park because you could have left and been exposed to some, something. Yeah. So yeah. it would only make sense if, if they're doing this as a protective measure, then, yeah, every single time that you enter – you have to be checked over again. Um, let, let's go over to to Losh. W- what do you think about these measures? How do they make you feel? I can get out of the corner now. Yeah. <laughs> You're <laughs> off a timeout. For 30 minutes. You're off a timeout. You're good. All right. Um, so I agree with both of you guys. I feel like us theme park goers, people that go consistently, it's at first it's going to be very annoying and very tedious. We're just going to have to get used to the new norm. It's We're going to have to get screened every time we go. We're going to have to be separated from our parties. For Horror Nights, for example, they're going to pulse us. Which, me, I'd love it. I'd love to be pulsed through a house. Because, yes, Scott, the look. Yeah, Scott was like, oh, what? <laughs> you don't By get pulsing, pulsed, that means like, like... It, it will be less groups going in and you can actually yeah. enjoy the scares. <laughs> Yeah, a group. Okay. Yeah. A break. I, I, okay, I thought you were talking about something else. It's like, wait. Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> Scott, I wasn't paying attention to Bristol for a second. Pulse and then I was like, <laughs> the opposite of conga line. <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah. yeah okay, exactly. yeah. yeah. I, I love getting pulsed. I love the feeling of getting pulsed. <laughs> Don't say it like that. That's going to be the next shirt. <laughs> I love getting pulsed in the back. I love the feeling of getting yeah. pulsed. Slogan. Oh, right, go ahead, Limited Lash, edition go ahead. t-shirt now available okay. on the Knights of Horror t-shirt. Wait, hold up, hold up. Losh has spoken very little, so... <laughs> Losh, uh, finish your thoughts, senor. Okay, so... I got to... I never went to another haunted event until last year, which was Dark Horizon. And I went at my own flow. I wasn't pulsed. I mean, I wasn't, like... Not pulsed. I wasn't, like, conga lining through the shit. And it was the best experience I've ever had. I'm like, I love this feeling of not having someone on my ass the whole time. <laughs> it's just that, amazing. Uh, that, that media access <laughs> was, was nice, huh? Lush, I'm trying to yeah. Joan on you. My but boy. You're, you're so you love, you love getting pulsed and not getting rid on the ass, right? I don't, I don't like anyone on my ass. I love being pulsed. Put that on a shirt. <laughs> what put is it on a shirt. In this podcast? This yeah. is... Obviously, I'm going to obviously have to put in this podcast not meant for kids. Nope. <laughs> not meant for kids. I apologize kids. to any children that have watched this podcast. <laughs> I'm sorry. The old man made me do it. Yeah. Cool. Cool. <laughs> All right. So we'll transition over chair. to uh, Senor Zombie Chris, the, the one with the freshest background right now with all the lighting. Look at that. All right. Oh, that looks fresh as hell. What a man down there. Ooh. Zombie Chris, man. How, how do you feel uh, with the, the measures that are being rumored as potentially coming to the parks and mm-hmm. to the event? Um, for the most part, if we're only talking about Universal, which – I think uh, Scott will see how Disney handles uh, security um, uh, over here on the East Coast, and it's not done very good. Um, it takes forever to get through some most of the time through Disney, especially if you have a book bag. Uh, God, it takes forever comparison to Universal. I think Universal will implement everything very smoothly because they've already kind of handled the security measurement like like very good and i think you're just going to do maybe there's going to be some kind of machine that does a temperature check or something like while you walk through like the metal detectors or something i would think that would be kind of the technology um other than that i think uh Lash had it perfectly about the pulsing in the uh house lines i think that's going to be something we've never experienced before at Horror Nights. And I think it's going to spoil us, you know, like for next year and years after, we're going to be like, oh, man, remember that one year when they, like, pulsed all the lines? Um, Other than that, like, I don't know how this is going to translate well to the rides because if you have folks that get on and then after they get off, they're going to have to somehow sanitize the entire ride 
then a new fresh group, that's going to kill the, the wait times are going to be atrocious, um, for folks. Um, also there's the language barrier. You know, most folks who come to the park, uh, they visit from other places in the world and sometimes they don't understand when, uh, attractions break down or, you know, things happen on rides and stuff. So try explaining now, you know, the whole factor that you can't sit together or there's even longer wait, you know? So, um, like Anthony said, I think these are just things that are going to be sort of tested in the start of, of how we go through things. And then they'll just be ironed out later on. Yeah. I think eventually they're just going to have to find a system that works. Uh, yeah. Like I said, everything starts as a disaster because it's a testing phase. But once they find the system of what works, eventually they nail it. And it took it takes people some time. I mean, Universal over here in Hollywood has basically like almost like an airport security style kind of security walkthrough where you just throw your bags in like an X-ray machine and it detects everything. And then you go and through a metal detector. Is, and that, Yeah, that's how, was the, that's um, how it is in Orlando. They said they're going to eliminate those X-ray belts. So, yeah, which is something that I'm actually happy about. They are. I, hate, I, I I don't like going through TSA. <laughs> but if they eliminate those X-ray belts, they they might eliminate your ability to bring backpacks as well. That's true. Oh, <clears throat> oh no. So, but yeah, I, I've heard that they're going to eliminate the X-ray belts just because everybody throwing their stuff on there is only That's a right. bigger yeah. chance of everything getting cross contaminated. Um, but yeah, that that. The parks and the event are in an interesting state. Luckily enough, there's been a lot of talk positively about what could be potentially happening. Um, and, and when I say positively, I mean they're talking about measures to, to be put in place to actually open. Um, there, there's other um, rumors that were going around earlier about things not happening up till next year. Things being closed down up till next year. And now they're talking about the the Florida governor, at least. I'm not sure in California, but the Florida governor is talking about how we're going to put some measures in place so that things could be opened up as soon as June. Um, and that's great. If things open up as soon as June, that means that they're able to put in some protocols, test things, so that by the time that we get to Halloween Horror Nights, we're, we're, running, we're running buttery smooth. And I, I think that that goes for both coasts. Um, things will open up sooner. That gives us time to to basically test things out. Um, but uh, you know what? I'm going to pass it on over to Anthony. I've, I've been a bit of a mic hog here. Uh, I am not the only host on this on this podcast. Uh, we do have three guests that have Are been sure very gracious of joining us. But Anthony, you beautiful mohawked man, go ahead and take over. It's because he's drunk off that iced tea. No, iced tea. <laughs> I've been hosting the show the entire time. D. Wait, whose channel is this again? <laughs> Damn. Oh. Eddie Tainment? Yeah. Eddie Tainment. <laughs> uh, have you been Eddie Tained? Have you been Eddie Tained? <laughs> Damn right. Are you not Eddie Tained? <laughs> Damn right. Are you yeah. not Eddie Tained? <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I think, uh, you know what? I, I, I recently, uh, I hate to bring this up, but in California, they did, the governor just came out today with a statement saying, I don't have a light switch or anything that I can turn on or flip. I can't tell you when stuff is going to get back to normal. And uh, that's kind of a, a sad and scary thing right now because, I mean, you know, with California, it's actually one of the most affected states uh, as far as the pandemic goes with the, the whole virus. Uh, and, you know, it does scare me going out every day. Uh, I will be honest. Uh, if I have to go out and get anything – it is very scary, even though I do take the necessary precautions. It still is very scary because there's a lot of – this is only cases that we know of that have been tested. Uh, so there could be people that have not been tested at all and still have it. Um, and I and I saw recently Florida just opened up their beaches, which was uh, – I think it was kind of a, a bad idea. <laughs> Floridians are idiots. <laughs> so, Florida morons. Um. <laughs> That yeah. was a bad idea, and I, I hope that doesn't affect going forward as far as, um, you know, events opening up and stuff, and that doesn't have to po postpone anything. Um, so I uh, – it, it's been it's been a really hard time for everyone. You know, we haven't lived through something like this 
since, you know, before any of us were even alive. I think it was like the 1930s the last time something like this happened or the 1920s. So it's definitely new to all of us. We're still trying to really go with the flow and try to really hang in there. I know a lot of us are starting to end up slowly like Jack Torrance from The Shining. Um, Little by little, all work and no play. Uh, But (laughs) I think it's stuff like this uh when we all come together even though it's all on on video chat and stuff uh, it, it it's stuff like this that really are motivating us as content creators and us uh not only as the creators but as fans to unite and make stuff for fans i think something like this i think whoever got the post notification bell for this just lost their shit because they're like oh my god <laughs> i watch all those people and they're in one video <laughs> that is nuts yeah um so if we can do that for you, and if you've made it this far in the podcast, um, <laughs> then we uh, we love doing it. We ain't going to stop doing it because this is something that we all truly love. We have a passion for. And, yeah, man, I mean, this has been a fun experience, and I hope we get to do more of these soon, especially since we all somewhat have, you know, more time on our hands. I know uh, Chris and uh, Adrian and – um scott they're all essential workers right now so uh really appreciate you guys as far as, far as essential workers go um and that goes for just anyone who's watching who's an essential worker whether you're in the medical field whether you're in the law enforcement field uh firefighters uh grocery stores convenience stores fast food restaurants anything that's open right now that's an essential business uh we really appreciate all the hard work and dedication that you're putting in uh you guys are the front liners of this right now and um yeah it's really hard but it, without you guys life wouldn't be going so really appreciate that um to end this on a positive note it's just been a fun time as far as all the shenanigans go i know i took it real serious and deep towards the end but uh you know the, the shenanigans have been fun it shows you what five youtubers can do when they get together uh it's a disaster yeah. Give us an hour just to get set up and going. A uh, beautiful it, disaster. It's, just, it's exactly what you said, you know? But, like, even though we have all the shenanigans and everything, it's entertaining. I feel like all of our audience are going to appreciate it. And I know from a creator standpoint that, like, all <laughs> four of you guys, like, at least in my eyes, I, like, respect all of you guys. And you guys are, like, down-to-earth content creators. Because as I, as I got into, no, most of you, besides Eddie, I haven't talked to Eddie the most. Um, <laughs> you guys know I only... I only ride with down to earth content creators. So I think this is good for all of us and the audience who are going to love this and, and absolutely be happy with this instead of being bored and cooped in their house. Well, she had yeah. something to say. This is like a, this is like a democratic debate uh, uh, when they raise their hands to talk. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was going to ask, uh, he said something about, uh, all the content creators. I'm going to ask if um, everyone's been Eddie tamed. Hey, Losh, you, nobody can see where you're pointing because all of us have different... I'm in a screens. corner. You're pointing over here, right? And it's going to look weird on mine. But you're on, like, the bottom left side of my screen. You're okay, pointing okay. this way. You're pointing to my PC, Where's so... Where's Eddie? <laughs> Eddie is, uh, for me, is on the top right so, corner. So right here? Me. Yeah. Right here? Right there. This old man is asking if you guys have been Eddie Tain. <laughs> <laughs> old man? That's messed up, man. No, hey, you're the I'm second kidding. oldest that's man. Like my, that's like my, that's my Cuban uncle up there. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you know what? From from a seniority perspective, I, I appreciate this time with all you guys. It was a blast. Um, and I, I'm glad that from a perspective of like content creators, we could actually all get together because I'm pretty sure that all of us, uh, you know, remove the virus, our, our basically followers cross-contaminate. <laughs> yeah, we we got people that watch SoCal, that watch Anthony, and watch Chris, watch Adrian, and watch Eddie. So no, no one watches I, my channel. What are you talking about? No one. What's watches, that? No one watches nobody, my content. Nobody please. watches Eddie. No one watches my shit. What are you talking about? Yeah, yeah. Nobody watches Eddie Tamen either. Why do you think I got zombie Chris and SoCal exploring up here? They're gonna boost my rate. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> not no, at all. I, I want. We're all collaborating though. Like, like we all slowly started to edge into collaborating. So like. A lot of people know me and Lost together already, and a lot of people already obviously know you and Anthony or um, Eddie and Anthony yeah. together. A lot of people know who Zombie Chris is just because Zombie has the the biggest following out of all of us. But mm-hmm. uh, so now it's like all of us, and me and Anthony have been doing it for a while. Like I said, like as far as collaborating, so it's like all of our audiences are like they're. I'm sure they're happy about this. Yeah, they're <laughs> intermeshed. So I, I think 
this is fun for us and fun for the audience as well. So, you know, Chris, Adrian, Scott, thank you guys for being on the podcast. Anthony, thank you for being my my co-host. And <laughs> usually he's usually he's the lead host. So I, I am, was, right? <laughs> yeah, this was a new experience for me. I yeah, apologize. I, beginning, so that's why you got to take over the captain's chair today. Yeah, I was going to say, you t- you took it over because this sound went out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Hey, hey, and I hope I rose to the challenge because this guy, those were big shoes to freaking fill. Okay? Yeah, you uh, <laughs> did all right. Yeah, yeah, I did all right. I did all so, right. So follow everybody on social media at ZombieChrisCT, at Lost TV, at SoCal Exploring Media, at uh, what's your Are you Eddie Tained? Are you Eddie Tained? <laughs> Are you Eddie Tained? Are you Eddie Tained at the Knights of Horror? Um, and keep up with everybody's channels: uh, Zombie Chris, Lost TV, SoCal Exploring, Eddie Tainment. Um, I'm the Knights of Horror, Anthony. Uh, we've had it a blast filming this one, and uh, we'll definitely do this again, boys. So thank you guys so much for being on the show. Um, hit that bell notification, like button, comments, all that fun stuff, and we will see you guys soon. Deuces.